Good evening. All right, it's time for us to uh, start the meeting. So I will call this meeting of the Yuba City City Council to order. Got a few things that I need to read here and I gotta get these guys out. It's amazing what happens when you rotate to this chair, you got any glasses. All right, the governor has declared a state of emergency to exist in California as a result of the threat of COVID-19. While the governor recently issued executive order N0721, which lifted certain orders and associated restrictions, there are still public health directives in place. Executive order N0821 also allows leg local legislative bodies to continue to hold meetings via conference calls while uh, still meeting state transparency requirements. The public's health and well-being are the top priority for the city of Yuba City, and you are urged to take all appropriate health and safety precautions. This meeting is utilizing, utilizing Zoom application for this live broadcast. For this meeting, we'll be using the questions and answers functionality of the tool in order to accommodate public comment. On your device, the question and answers section of the app is located at the bottom of your Zoom screen. For those that would like to comment during this meeting, please enter your comment into the question and answers portion of the app and be sure to state the item you'll be commenting on. During the public comment of each item, staff will read aloud the comments provided by the public for all to hear for that specific item. Be timely with your questions as once the public hearing is closed or the item has been discussed by council and voted on, no more comments will be accepted for that item. Can I have roll call, please? Mayor Shaw? Here. Vice Mayor Kirchner? Here. Council Member Boomgarden? Here. Council Member Espindola? Here. Council Member Harris? Here. Great. Tonight's invocation will be given by Yuba City Police Department Chaplain Ron Fortenberry. And our Pledge of Allegiance will be given by, is it Adelie Burns? If you'll please join us. Please stand. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be in a country where we can assemble freely to discuss the laws that govern us. Thank you, secondly, for these servants who serve so well with integrity and dignity. I pray, Father, that you would continue to help them see the issues at hand with clarity. I pray that whatever issue faces them, you would give them extraordinary knowledge and wisdom. I pray that you would bless this meeting tonight. May your favor be upon us. Continue to bless our city. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You can be seated. <laughs> Our city attorney will give us uh, reported action out of uh, closed session. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There was no reportable action from closed session. Thank you. And do we have any agenda modifications uh, to the agenda tonight? Okay. Um, all right, then we will move on to ceremonial presentations and we are going to start with the recognition of Girl Scout Troop 2179 for their adopt a park and I'd like to invite the Girl Scout Troop 2179 to join us right down front.
All right, if I could have you guys back up just a little bit so we can all get in here. Uh, whoop, I'm in the way. So, everybody's got a bag? All right. Isn't this a good looking group up here tonight? Yeah. So, well, it's our pleasure to have you here this evening. And um, their leader of Girl Scout Troop 2179 is Amy Floyd. Woo. There you are. Why aren't you up here with them? Come on. <laughs> And the co-leader is Christy Burns. Oh, you need to be up here as well. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, and we have Cooper Garcia Floyd. You can wave so we know where you're at. Okay. Chloe Morrison. There's Chloe. Ella Rohde. Okay. Aaron Eubanks. Okay. You're not related to Thaddeus, are you? <laughs> Hi, Thad. Uh, Adelie Burns, okay, our pledge leader tonight. Delilah Bates, okay. Emily Hessler. Is it Rylan Hodge? Um, Rylan was able to make it. Okay. And Emma Messick, okay. She's not here as well. Okay. Anyway, why are you guys here tonight? You guys did an awesome job for our city. From October 2020 to October 2021, Girl Scout Troop 2179, consisting of two leaders and nine Girl Scouts, adopted Hillcrest Park. During this year, they volunteered their time to enhance the beauty and preserved Hillcrest Park by planting two trees, planting 20 different plants, making sure that the plants and trees had plenty of water, especially during the drought we had, spread bark to retain moisture for the plants and beautify the park, and enhance the area by picking up litter. Girl Scout Troop 2179's dedication and commitment are to be admired and respected throughout our community. This is a great group of young leaders in our community, and we are very proud of your service to our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Dave Shaw, Mayor of the City of Yuba City, and on behalf of the entire City Council, do hereby present a certificate of appreciation to Girl Scout Troop 2179 for all their hard work and dedication for adopting Hillcrest Park from October 2020 to October 2021. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> you guys can give them a certificate if you like. And Amy, would you like to say a few words? Oh, yes. Okay. Girls, I am so proud of you for all your hard work and for always wanting to help our community at um, Hillcrest Park. And I'm hoping we can continue on maybe for another year and keep making it better and looking out for it because it's in the area where we meet. Um, we had a lot of fun doing this. And would you recommend this to another troop to adopt a park in our city? So I think we're going to do it even longer. So I'm just so proud of you and taking the time to um, love on our community and all that you do. So good job. I had so much fun. Thank you guys so much. Uh, did everybody get the pictures they want or we need to stagger up? Can we get council behind them? Okay. If the council can stand behind you guys.
Those are the awesome things when you see young people in our community step up. So just major, major uh, shout out to those guys. Um, our second um, presentation tonight, we're honored to have from Adventist Health and Ride Out, Mr. Chris Champlin uh, here to uh, speak with us as he is the new president, correct, sir? Yes. All right. Thank you. You have the floor. <laughs> How's that? Is that on? So how do you follow that? That's not even fair. Although if they had stayed, we would have ordered cookies. So, Well, thank you for having us. I've been asked to come and introduce myself and say a few words about the hospital. And before I do, just thank you for having us. We've been so, we felt so welcomed. My wife, Kim, and I just have recently bought a house here in the community. Uh, looking forward to moving in. We've, we're starting to find the community a little bit. We found Target. We found the Buttes, the smallest mountain range in the world. <laughs> so full service community has its own mountain range. Who, who knew, right? A little bit about me, a little bit about us. Uh, I've been in healthcare in the industry for quite a few years now. I, I won't count, but uh, started my career in the uh, mid 1980s in public health. I spent 13 years in public health. And then did a few years in, on the payer side of the industry with what is now Anthem Blue Cross. The last 20 years, I served as the chief strategy officer for Dignity Health uh, in both Southern California and here in Northern California, the Sacramento market. But I'm very, very excited to have joined Adventist Health and Ride Out a little while ago. The, I can't say enough about the team. I mean, the team is just amazing. Everybody that's there is, is just has such a, a burden for service. It's, it's all encompassing. So it's, it's really wonderful. So thank you for having us. That's a little bit about me. Uh, where's, that, where's the hospital going? Uh, I've asked to say a few things about that. We, we really could try to boil the ocean, but I don't think it'd be very useful. So we've chosen four things to focus on in the coming year. Number one is quality. Number two is patient experience. Number three is length of stay. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on that. Number four is growth. So quality, quality is our product. We have to have top, top quality. Uh, our goal, the entire senior leadership, the entire leadership of the system office is all about quality. We've got uh, people lined up for all of the national uh, measurements that, that hospitals get measured against. We've got a way to go, uh, being completely honest, but again, I think, I think we've got the right people in the right places to get to where we need to go. Um, patient experience, uh, this is a big thing. It's a big thing for me personally. Uh, I always give the mother test. You know, would, I, would I bring my mother here and would my mother have the experience that I want her to have? So one of the things that I've started doing personally is rounding every day, and our uh, senior executive team is gonna be doing that as well. And we're really keeping it as what we're calling a sacred hour. So between nine and 10 o'clock every morning, we get out, we spend time with our staff, we spend time with our patients. It's an opportunity for us to get face to face with the people who are using our hospital. Uh, I love it, it's, it's just a great time to meet people. And you hear a lot of things positive and maybe not so positive from dealing with people. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, length of stay. Uh, length of stay is an issue for us. I know a lot of people have probably used our emergency department, and there's a long length of stay. As a matter of fact, I was, we were just talking before we got up here, we're probably going to have to go on internal disaster tonight because we've got 35 people waiting in the emergency department just to be placed. Everybody is full of COVID. An average uh, emergency room day for a ride out is about 180 patients. We've had six, seven days of over 300 patients. 340, I think, was our top. Um, again, I just want to give this, this staff a shout out. I, I, I'm there at shift change purposefully. And the, the, the word picture that I could paint for you is watching uh, soldiers come off of the battlefield. I mean, they're, they're, they've, they've given their all. They're there. So despite seeing twice as many people as we normally see, this is impressive. Our to be seen time is 17 minutes. I mean, the team is just knocking out of the park. So kudos to them. 
Lastly is growth, uh, really st starting out on a, on a growth uh, mission. Everywhere there's a Starbucks, I'd like to see a primary care clinic, right? I, this community has severe lack of access to primary care. The primary care clinics that we'd like to see will have extended hours, 7 a.m. to 7, 8 p.m. Uh, again, where there's a Starbucks, where there was a McDonald's, I although it's because those companies do the work for us, right? High traffic areas, high visibility. We want one. So you can, you can access it on your way to work. You can access it on your way home from work, on the way to school, at, uh, weekend hours, uh, Saturdays, Sundays, extended hours. So really those four things, I think if we focus on, on those this year, you're going to see some big changes at the hospital. We're pleased to be here. Thank you for being so welcoming. I, I, I don't know if you want to say how welcome we've, we've felt, but everybody has just been so special. So. Uh, we're going to pass out business cards. I came up from Paradise and I didn't bring business cards. I apologize. We'll get them to you. Please call me. Um, this is going to be a partnership. Uh, you know, the it's going to take the community to really turn healthcare around in the community. So I look forward to your partnership. And please call at any point in time you have a question or, or comment or just want to talk or go to dinner. That's good too. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Do we have any, are you willing to take a few questions? Uh, any questions from the council? Through the mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, it's not a question, but I, I know it's always, you probably hear your fair share of compliments and fair share of, of challenges, right? So here, Challenges here, more than compliments. Well, here's a compliment. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm relocating my mother from the Bay Area up to the, the fountains. I just want to let you know that the staff there has been extremely accommodating. Um, <laughs> And I think that, uh, uh, so I, again, I know as a business operator myself, sometimes you don't always hear the good stories. Yeah. Here's the good stories. Welcome to our community. If there's anything that any of us can do to, uh, to make that even uh, better than what it has been, I don't think we can grow another mountain range or anything like that, but um, there's lots of stuff here and we look forward to, to interact with you. Thank, Thank you, I appreciate the compliment. Today. I will pass that along if, if you're okay with it. You know, the one thing I failed to mention was our, was our board, our community board is, is so engaged and, and Jackie's you know, here. Jackie said she's gonna stare at me the whole time trying to make me nervous, it didn't work. But, but uh, the board is very, very engaged. And again, I think without the board and, and the community support, we just wouldn't be where we are. So, so thank you. Awesome. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you. Appreciate Again, it. thank you for being here and welcome to Yuba City. Thank you. So. All right, we will move on to agenda item three, um, appearance of interested citizens. You're welcome and encouraged to participate in this meeting. Public comment is taken on items listed on the agenda when they are called. Public comment on items not listed on the agenda will be considered at this time. Comments on controversial items may be limited and large groups are encouraged to select representatives to express the opinions of the group. Members of the public will have three minutes to speak. Written requests received at least 24 hours prior to the meeting will be, meeting will be allotted five minutes to comment. And, uh, Tonight I have one speaker's card, and that is Mr. John Buckland. Mayor, uh, members of the council, in the last week um, I have received information, and this is direct um, information. I'll, I'll read this first and then um, try to give you a little bit more uh, in-depth information. It has come to my attention that local homeless and the addicted are engaging in risky, lethal behavior. I have direct and reliable information where it's becoming common practice for individuals ingesting, this is on purpose, lethal doses of fentanyl and recovering via Narcan, described, and they described this as the ultimate high. In many cases, the Narcan is being supplied through local homeless services organizations, both in Yuba City, Sutter County, and Marysville and Yuba County. This information has been provided directly and indirectly from homeless users and providers of the Narcan resources. I would demand that services funding funded through grants provided by this city must not promote, fund, or condone behavior adverse to homeless recovery. 
This is something that is promoting the use of illegal fentanyl. Um, the narcotic itself can be fatal, and we must not, as a community, fund or condone such action. I understand the human nature. We don't want people to die from this. But that's not, the, that's not our job at this point. Our job is simply to provide resources to these individuals so they are not ingesting this product and then having to use, I mean, the, the best resources we have out there is Narcan and we can't be just doing it for recreational high purposes. And that's all I really have to say on this, on the subject. All right. Thank you, Mr. Buckland. If we could have you possibly follow up with our city manager, Ms. Langley, it'd be absolutely curious to have that information come across, get that to our homeless liaison and the chief. And uh, cause we're gonna be having some upcoming workshops on homeless and how we fit into it. But homeless is a problem and if we've got um, drug addiction and stuff, which we know is there. If we have the information, is there anything we can do about it? Absolutely, I know this council would, would be behind it. And again, my, my main uh, source of concern is the fact that resources um, that should be going directly to homeless um, uh, intervention is now, now going into recreational use of um, Narcan for an extra high. The ultimate high is what they're calling it. So, thank you. It. Thank you. Do I have any other comments under agenda item three from the public? Do we have any online? No public comment. Okay. <clears throat> then we will move on to agenda item. Uh, well, we'll move on to consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and can be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items prior to the time that council votes on the motion unless member of the council, staff, or public request specific items be discussed or removed from the consent calendar for individual action. We have a written uh, comment and request to discuss item eight separately, so it will be pulled from the consent and taken up immediately following. Um, would anyone from the public like to speak on the any of the consent items? Is anyone online? No public comment. All right, then I will bring it back to the council for any comments or action. To the mayor? Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to make a motion to um, accept the consent calendar items four through seven. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Ayes have it, motion carries. We'll move on now to business item number eight, which is city council regional boards and committee assignments uh, as amended. And uh, I will ask our city clerk if she will uh, please read the written comment that was received. So this email was received from Heather Esman on Sunday, January 30th at 10.51 a.m. Dear Mayor and City Council, comparing the committee assignments from last year to this year, I was shocked to see that the mayor has twice as many assignments as Councilwoman Espindola. I worry about Yuba City's representation at these committee meetings, especially since the city will be approving some very big development projects in the near future. In the past, the sitting, ma sitting mayor has traditionally had few committees that only the mayor is assigned to, making him or her have more than the others. Nevertheless, both Councilman Harris and Councilwoman Espindola have eight and six assignments respectively, while the mayor has 14. How is this an equitable distribution? Have Harris and Espindola requested fewer assignments? At the December 21st meeting, members of the Sabufka urged Mayor Shaw to change his mind and his explanation does not match the facts. According to his comments, this, his selection was what was in the best interest of the city and that only Harris and Kirchner are assured to be there after the next election. And it's in the mayor's discretion to make committee appointments. 
If he was worried about continuity at that meeting, why does he have so many assignments? Councilwoman Espindola's reports at the end of the meeting are very informative as opposed to many of Vice Mayor's and Mayor Shaw's reports. And yet this good work is recognized with fewer assignments. As a woman and a member of a minority in the community, I hope she will keep up the good work and know that if she needs my support in a re-election campaign, she is welcome to contact me as she has my full support. I've asked that this comment be read during the meeting, knowing full well that the item will have to be pulled from the consent calendar. And although changes at this point in time are highly unlikely, it gives everyone on the council the chance to get their opinion heard. And I'm very curious why the other gentlemen have nothing to say on this matter. Thank you, Heather Esman. Okay, thank you. Is there any other public comment on agenda item eight? Any other public comment? Anything online? No public comment. Okay, then I will pull it back to the council. And on agenda item eight, um, since it was pulled and it was a committee assignments, uh, I will go ahead and make uh, my comments first tonight. Um, Agenda item eight, as it was consent uh, agenda item, we normally don't even speak to these because they are routine in nature. And although based upon the statement just read, I feel that it's important for the public to be presented with the information in a clear, concise, and accurate way. The statement just read is an example of someone submitting a statement without fully understanding the matter. I have asked that a chart that Sierra's already got up there for me uh, be used or be shown tonight that I used in my process and be shared with everyone. And um, because the process itself can be quite confusing. When you look at the big long list that's in our packet, it will look like some people have more than others. While it seems some members have more responsibility than others, if you look at the green area at the top, you will see that each of us have about the same number of assignments across the council. And the green area at the top is the standing committees that we are all assigned to. That is where the bulk of our assignments are done and each assignment has a different time commitment that is also weighed in on the decision of who serves on which committees. I would offer that if anyone in the future should have any question on any matter, matter please reach out to any of the council members or the city manager for clarification as we'll be happy to provide that. And if you still feel like you need to make comments, by all means, please do. The troubling part of the statement tonight is an example of what this council has stated many times um, that we, we do not want. And this is not the place nor the time for campaigning. While this is not solicited this evening, by any member of this council, these types of statements are not the professionalism nor the decorum that we wish to have in these chambers. Each and every council member does a great job of being an active part of their assignments and reporting back through their various means to the entire council. This council works well together and respects each other's opinions and insight. Council member Espindola was made aware of this statement yesterday and I believe she shares the same concerns as I. While we can only speculate on what the intent was in the written statement, this council is determined to be upfront and transparent in our work. Campaigning in the chambers from anyone is not acceptable and we will take all appropriate measures to protect the integrity of these chambers and to strive to do what's best for our city. And I would open it up to any comments by my fellow colleagues. Sure, if I may, for the mayor. Um, that's in interesting. Um, I would just say that the process is the process. The mayor has traditionally been tasked by, by the council to make appointments to the commissions. Um, we, we serve in whatever capacity. We have an opportunity to discuss and, and, uh, and even debate those um, appointments here in a public forum, and we vote on them and um, ratify it, if you will, which this council did. And I would stand by that process. I, I, I certainly did not, I think the, I mentioned, uh, did, did I ask for something less? No. Um, and and, and it, it is understandable that um, if someone would take a look at the, the, the number alone, um, 
how perhaps maybe I have fewer, but I know one of one of my, my assignments in particular, SACOG, is very time consuming. And so we talk about equitable distribution. I think it's more important to recognize equitable distribution of time versus the number of assignments. Um, and I'm, I'm comfortable with what I've been assigned and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Yeah, through the mayor, um, <clears throat> as a former mayor, you know, the, the distribution of assignments is an extremely uh, challenging process because all of us would love to be on all of the committees and, and do the work for the city. That's what we were elected for. Um, and so trying to um, shuffle the deck, if you will, and try to place uh, the right people in the right positions uh, and not offend anybody uh, is, is difficult. It's a challenge. And um, I know in my, my term, it was trying to put the right people in the right spots. And, you know, there, there, are, there is some um, method, if you will, to the madness about who's on what, uh, what assignments. And I would agree with uh, former mayor and now Councilman Harris in regards to some committees are really intense. And I would, I would cite that uh, Councilwoman Espindola was placed on water last year and she's on water this year. And if all you have to do is look outside and see what the weather forecast is. And this, this is an important assignment. So I, I'm really pleased that you have embraced that and you've done a lot with that. And I'm not sure that, that Ms. Essman knows all of that that goes into the decision making um, about that. And there are things that I, I would love to be on SACOG. You know, I would love to be on RWMA or the Transit Authority, but a, a distribution uh, isn't necessarily, by number, isn't necessarily the best representation of how, how the workload is distributed. Um, because some of those distributions are ad hoc committees, and those are, are short-term things that happen. Um, Councilman, uh, or Vice Mayor, excuse me, Kirchner and I are on the budget, budget ad hoc committee. You know, that, that's a finite period of time. That's not a year-long year -long deal. So, again, I, I agree with you, um, Councilman Harris. I also agree with you, Mayor, that there's probably a little bit more dialogue that could occur in regards to how these things are set up and, and the, the workload that's required and the expertise by which people are placed into those positions uh, and, and to the best interest of the city of Yuba City. So thank you. Anyone else have any comments? Through the mayor. Sure. It's hard to add anything that hasn't already been uh, spoken, but uh, to um, uh, council person, um, Boomgarter's point. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, still being the new guy up here, new person up here. Um, I know I had I had uh, visions of grandeur when I came on, and we had the discussion. And he's like, "Okay, what do you want?" I'm like, "Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G." And he's like, "Okay, well, no, 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 no." And, and this is why. This is why. Okay. And and and. Um, you know, you get that first year under your belt, and I'm like, okay, I'm glad he did that. <laughs> so um, it, it is. It's it, it, it's got to be a tough um, uh, process to 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 make that work. But I think the 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 the, the um, schedule we have up there is uh, workable. So I'm I'm good with that one. Ms. So, Mendola, do you have anything you'd like to add? I think um, the subject has been um, well discussed. People have given their um, input. Uh, I think the concern, as most of you who were following this, was one committee that I was mostly concerned about, not necessarily um, the, the entire group of committees. You know, entering my fourth year, I understand how that um, occurs we kind we you know we kind of shuffle but we all work work within each other in the back end within the rules of the Brown Act to make sure that we're you know abiding those um, discussions uh, you know I I thought and I continue to think that you know Sutter Butte's flood control I could be an excellent representative to continue that work because uh, I've excelled in it um, and in the area of uh, water is an area that I have grown to really um, work hard because um, it was a subject matter I was not well, um, not there. I didn't start off with it, 
but um, somehow, I don't know, Council Member Harris and Council Member Boomgarden kind of thought maybe she could do it. Maybe she, she might learn some things and help our city. And those things will flourish from that. They will happen. They'll be um, just demonstrated as we all, you know, the work doesn't happen alone here. I think that um, part of the idea, what makes it hard for us is that we're restricted certain times to be able to have really open conversations because of the Brown Act. And, you know, and, and then it makes it, this is the opportunity to have these discussions. Um, but I think one thing um, that our community and as a council, I have learned um, that this is an interest to the community once they figure out that there is ways to do things differently. And um, so I embrace that. I do agree uh, mostly with the comment about the campaigning. The other parts, you know, Heather, that's your opinion and I respect it. So um, do I say uh, anything else about this? You know, we, 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 we put in, we get out of what we put into it. Any committee assignment, the work will be developed from what each council member's interest, time, effort, relationships, and outcomes. That's what I do. So, and I'll continue to work with all of you, and I'll continue to work with the committees that I'm part of, and um, could have been done differently. I, I do agree that I should have stayed on Sabuka. But we move on. All right. I'll close out the comments with this. Uh, as I st tried to state earlier, I'm proud of this entire council because my colleagues do a heck of a job on all the committee assignments. Grace, you you dove into water. You're on RWA, Aqua. You got all kinds of things going, which is great for the city. Uh, Sean, you've been doing a tremendous job over at SACOG. You know, there's there's a lot of things going on. Those two right there take a lot of time and commitment. Um, Mark, and I know I'm being informal right now, but I just feel like it. And it's uh, the stuff that you've brought in the different ad hoc committees that I've served with you on with development impact fees and the budget and everything else has absolutely been incredible. And Wade, you dove in, you want to say cog out of the chute, but you have done an excellent job everywhere we've sent you. And this year, you're still doing a great job, and I'm proud of you. He is actually the new vice chair of the Transit Authority which you probably would have told earlier, but let's just let the cat out of the bag. Um, this council does a hell of a job getting back to it, and we communicate and work well together, and uh, I agree, it's behind us. Um, just uh, don't want to cross that campaign line in the uh, silly season. So with that, I will open it up to uh, action from the council. Oh, do I need to check online? I did earlier, didn't I? You did. Yeah, I did, so we're good. Action by the council. Uh, through the mayor, motion to approve item number eight okay. of the of the uh, business item now. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those no say nay. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. We will move on to agenda item nine, the public hearing number five, adoption of an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Yuba City, California, at in sections 2-9.04, 2-9.05, and 2-9.06 to chapter two, title nine of the Yuba City Municipal Code to establish a district-based system of elections for members of the City Council. Tonight, it will be presented by Shannon Chapman, our city attorney, and... Do we have our demographer here tonight? It doesn't appear so. I'll carry the ball if you don't mind. <clears throat> I have some good news. After a half a year of working on this council, you have finally reached the last hearing required under the law. So hopefully tonight you'll be able to wrap this up. I know that the public has been involved in this process and we've posted things on the website. We've sent out notices. We've done all the requirements that we'd be required to do. And this evening before you is the second reading of the ordinance. If the approved by the council this evening, it will mean that the city will start to move to a transition from the at-large system of voting where you just can live anywhere and you're voted by the majority of everybody in the city, well, whoever wins the most votes, I should say, to the district system. 
And the district system means you represent a district, district one, two, three, four, or five, and you live in that district and you're elected by that district if you're a council member from that district. So that is the transition uh, that is being proposed this evening. That process is consistent with state law, the uh, California Voting Rights Act, and the Fair Maps Act. And I'm available if you have any questions. All right, thank you. And shall we go ahead and open the public hearing then, sir? All right. The public hearing on the public, the public hearing on the public hearing number five, selection of district map and election sequence, adoption of an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Yuba City, California, adding sections 2-9.04, 2-9.05, and 2-9.06 to chapter two, title nine of the Yuba City Municipal Code to establish a district-based system for of elections for members of the City Council is now open. If there are any members of the public who would like to address the council on this issue, please provide your statement via public comment. State your name and address for the record. And we do have a speaker's card. Uh, Mr. Buckland, you are up first, sir. I've been aware of the California uh, Voters Rights Act since its inception in 2001. This is a serious matter requiring consideration absent incumbent intent. In the United States, voters choose those best reflecting the demographics of respected communities. Districting of a city promotes this agenda. The proposal on the table put forth by the Yuba City Council is biased it only considered, it was only considered by current council members with the intent of incumbency. They failed to research over 125 ordinances or policies to determine best practices to avoid perception and involvement of bias on the part of the currently elected officials. Allow me to contrast three recent convictions of this council published in the Appeal Democrat. Transparency, there's none. They claimed it was all transparent, but there wasn't a transparency issue. Gerrymandering, there was none. No shenanigans. Let me address transparency. No public participation was involved in drawing the lines. Gerrymandering, the lines of District 3 have weighted demographics and adjustments to include the residents of the current elected member. Shenanigans, this is obvious to all. Look at how the council has devised a scheme to allow an incumbent in District 2 to remain active for re-election, while another serving the same district is proposed to serve at large while avoiding, or while voiding District 5 of elected representation. The proposed action places residents of District 5 at a disadvantage, whereby we lack representation of a qualified legally elected member representing the district. I hereby request the Yuba City Council adopt the following. Adjust the lines uh, between districts three and four, and you've heard previously regarding that very same subject. Open elections for districts one, three, and five in 2022. This, this uh, uh, provides um, current elected members to fill out their, their terms and currently open up elections in those other districts. That's all I have for you. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from the public? Do we have any other comments from the public? Any online? No public comment. Mr. Chaffin, do you have anything to add based upon the public comment that just walked out the back door? Would you like me to respond to some of his uh, questions? That would be appropriate, sir. Okay, thank you very much. First, uh, there was a concern of bias, uh, that apparently that uh, the map that's being selected this evening would only result in the re-election of the sitting council members. As you may recall, the city council did request a, what a map would look like if everybody did not have conflicting jurisdictions, and they looked at that and decided not to use that. And the reason for that was, is it did not meet the requirements and the standards that the city council and the state law had set for districting. Instead, they selected what's called the green map that is attached to your ordinance. And as you may recall, in the green map, Councilmember Harris and Councilmember Boomgarden 
if they both decided to run for the district election, would be running against one another. That is the reason why there's no one in District 5. So that brings back to the question of, well, who's going to be representing District 5? And I think it comes back to the bigger issue of understanding the difference between being elected at large and being elected by district. Under the at-large system, you're elected by everyone in the city and you can live anywhere in the city. Theoretically, all five council members could live next door to each other. So when it comes time to transition to a district-based map, there's going to have to be divisions consistent with the law. Those include communities of interest, natural barriers, and other sorts of divisions that are in your staff report. It would be incredibly awkward to try to draw a map where the five of you living next door to each other represented five different districts. That would be a clear evidence of gerrymandering. However, to ensure that we didn't have it in this particular time, we actually hired the city, an independent professional demographer to assess the requirements of the California Voting Rights Act, the requirements of the Fair Map Act, to take the latest census data, to incorporate that data, and to ensure that each one of the maps that were presented to the city council for consideration met the, those requirements, including a balanced population, so representation per district member would be basically equal, and location. Now, it just so happens that the at-large members can live wherever they want to live. As you know, you're not required to live in a district. So with regards to District 5, it's not that they do not have a representative. Right now, District 5, or what would be District 5, have five representatives. They're sitting right there, and they've all been elected by the people. As you transition into a district system, the first set of sequencing, as we call it, is or timing that comes up would mean that three of you would be, well, not three, but three districts would come up for election. And what that does is it means that there's still two people available to represent District 5 and who have been elected by people in District 5. So that I hopefully has addressed the um, the gerrymandering issue and the reason why there's no District 5 and maybe the misunderstanding that the council was attempting to draft a map where they would re-elect themselves because the council specifically rejected that map. I think the uh, last item was gerrymandering and for you know, I'm sure that uh, the council is aware of what that means and probably anybody who had to go through the civics class, I think mine was in sixth grade where I learned about gerrymandering. And that is, is where you draw the lines to try to give yourself or give a particular council member a particular advantage. And in this particular case, the council selected an independent demographer to make sure that that would not happen. And to come up with independent recommendations as to what would be appropriate for district boundaries. Now, finally, with regards to transparency, um, I, I can't speak as to what people would consider transparent or not transparent. I can say that we've been engaged in this process for over six months. I can say that all requirements of the California Voting Rights Act with regards to public notice and hearings have been met. I can say that we have had five hearings on this matter and an opportunity for the public to submit maps. I can say that the city has engaged in extensive efforts and provide what's called District R mapping tools for the community that are actually used by professional demographers along with training in order to enable people to submit maps if they desired or if they thought that the maps that were being submitted were not sufficient. There was at least five different opportunities to provide public comment as to what the nature of those maps would look like. So whether or not we have met transparency requirements that's up to the individual to decide, but from a legal perspective, we have met all the requirements of the California Voting Rights Act. And I hope that's answered your question. Thank you. Under the public hearing, is there any other comments online? No public comment. No, th no further comments from the public? Okay, then with that, I will close the public hearing and bring this back to the council. Do you have any questions or action from the council? about comments comments as well well please through to the mayor um as the uh, as the speaker referenced transparency shenanigans and gerrymandering which i think were quotes from my 
uh, comments um, from um, local media. First and foremost, thank you, Mr. Chaffin, for you know very well explaining exactly the process. Uh, as it relates to transparency, uh, you did a, an excellent job of talking about this being the fifth public hearing. And I would also add that we're not the only ones doing districting right now. So anybody in the community that didn't know that this was going on, uh, I would have to question on where they've been. Okay, they, they either didn't know, which I can't com comment on, or they chose not to, to get engaged until um, he'll hear at the fifth public hearing. And, and it's appropriate for people to speak at the public hearing, and I encourage them to do so. So it wasn't inappropriate or wrong to hear those comments. It's just a little late in the game at this point as far as I'm concerned. I think we have been extremely transparent. I think that we entered into this process knowing that uh, this would be potentially something that, that would be an, an, an issue. And uh, we, haven't, we haven't really heard of that. We've had a couple public comments at, at public hearing number four. And, uh, and a comment tonight. So uh, I feel, I mean, I have to feel as an elected representative that we, we have been open to the public and that, that uh, we have been transparent. As far as shenanigans and gerrymandering, I want to speak to those, uh, you know, especially uh, myself and, and Councilman Harris. If there were shenanigans going on or gerrymandering going on, do you think for a moment that we would sit back and, and pit each other against each other? I mean, that's just ludicrous as far as I'm concerned. That's, just, that's beyond belief to me. Uh, we, we went above and beyond. No, I want to retract that. We did what was right and did what the demographer told us was a defensible legal position in regards to establishing these districts per the legal representations that are, are laid out for us by the state of California. So. To, to say that there was gerrymandering or shenanigans, I, I think, is a patently false statement. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with that. And if it did, as you mentioned, uh, our city attorney, we would have probably tried to go with the no-pair map and subject, subjected this city to a legal challenge, which we opted not to do because that's not the right thing to do. Um, uh, again, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would tell you that, that I think this council has been diligent in its review of this. Uh, I think it has, has been a, a long process with, with uh, neutral third-party demographers, our legal opinion, and, and our, own, uh, our own ethics, if you will, in regards to how we've pr proceeded with this. And for someone to call that into question, uh, I would just say politely that I call that bull. Thank you. Through the mayor, yes, comment. I just want to add that um, one thing that our city has done um, just in the last year or more, actually, probably through two or three years, but let me back up before you say that. I just want to, um, well said, completely well said, 100% on, on what you just mentioned to support that. Um, the transparency part of what I, which is interesting, that community is saying, you know, not been informed. And our city has intentionally translated documents into three languages. Um, and we have made efforts to, I personally reached out to people and, and mentioned that we were doing this. Love to hear from you, come to the council meeting. Um, it would be great. Uh, so, I trust that um, I, I know my ethics, I know my integrity, and I believe that representing this community um, as um, a part of the work that any person, and to say that uh, former um, council member Buckland uh, shows up to question our integrity in, in this process is really um, disturbing and and just to say it in the most simplest way, it's really sad that a person who knows the system, who has been, who represented us um, prior to us, and comes in and and just drops a bomb and in the aspect of conspiracy, and none of it is true. And so, I just have to say that um, I'm insulted, but I will show you, as the rest of us will show you, because we don't just talk, we do it. 
Thank you. Any comments? I wasn't going to dignify that display with the response. However, I concur with both of my colleagues who have spoken so far in that everything was completely untrue. We've gone, we've got, uh, complied with every aspect of the law. We've had five, five public hearings for people to come to comment. We've had an opportunity for the, for the public to um, create their own map. We come up with something that was most legally sound to, to, to uh, not expose this city to any type of litigation, which created an awkward moment. It's gonna create an awkward situation for uh, Council Member Boomgardner. And I, and um, you know, we did we did that because it's the right thing to do. You do the right thing, even when it hurts, because it's the right thing to do. And I stand by our decision. I stand by the demographer. I stand by the recommendation of our city attorney. I stand. I stand by the uh, the vote that we all, as a council, set forth. That is the process. And um, I, I agree, Grace. It's 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 sad to see someone who used to sit right up here, come in and um, make accusations, which are false, and then walk out the door without even to give an opportunity to listen to an explanation. So it's clear what the intent really was, and um, it's sad. Um, but um, we are here, we've made our decision. I think it's, I think it's the best decision for the city um, based on what we've been faced with to, in order to make that decision. And um, I am comfortable with it, and I'm proud to be here with all of you. Thank you very much. So, Vice Mayor, do you have any comments? Yes, through the mayor. Um, you know, when we started down this road um, almost a year ago, we knew it was going to be a, a, a long process, and we knew we had to get it right. Um, not, not only because of the legal implications, just because... It's 10 years until we, we, we have to do this again. So we got to get it right. We got we got to make sure it's done legally. We got to make sure the uh, the community is involved. The um, the accusation of transparency just doesn't hold water because uh, for, it, it's been on this. I'm sorry, it's been on the city's website the whole time, uh, beginning with the with the with the map that we rejected because it 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 wasn't defendable. And so the, the maps were there. The tool was there. And if you get the appeal Democrat, it was uh, in the appeal Democrat uh, several times. And, and it's to council uh, person Espindola's point in, in different languages. So the, the, the effort was there, the transparency is there, and we've got a workable map and I stand behind it. Well said. Thank you. Uh, not much more to add to what's already been said. Uh, I'll go back to council member Harris's uh, remarks, which I pointed out. Uh, to come before any governing body, basically try to mic drop and not even to stick around to get the answers that you pose the questions for speaks volumes and it brings in the question of the motives and character of the person standing at the podium. So um, it is a sad day that that occurred. That is, again, not what these chambers are accustomed to with the professionalism and decorum. I know that ethics, character, professionalism, uh, transparency, doing what's right for this city is at the core of this council, and that's what's made this council really special for the past three years, uh, putting other people first. So with that, um, I will bring it back for action to uh, the council. Uh, through the mayor. Yes, sir. Um, like to uh, move that we adopt an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Yuba City, adding sections 2-9.04, 2-9.05, and 2-9.06 to Chapter 2, Title IX of the Yuba City Municipal Code to establish a district-based system of elections for members of the City Council by title only and waive the second reading. Second. Uh, just a point of clarification, that was the City Council of the City of Yuba City, California. Was that correct, uh, Council Member Boomgarden? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, in California. Just wanted to make sure that was in the title. Okay. okay. And I have a second by Councilwoman Espindola. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. We'll move to agenda item 10. Staffing and salary modifications in the finance department. We have Mr. Morrison, our finance director. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. I'm bringing the next phase of staffing needs for the finance division focused on the accountants. 
Uh, I did receive communication from Local One um, that they have questions or concerns about the Accountant One position that's uh, in the staff report, so I removed it from the resolution to bring back another time uh, until we have a chance to sit with them and uh, hear their uh, questions and concerns. You do maybe have updated resolutions. Oh, I don't have updated resolutions in front of you. Uh, City Attorney, what do I need to do here? Do you have copies by any chance? Uh, not on me, sir. Uh, could I suggest we go to item 11 uh, to give you an opportunity to uh, grab those copies and then that way, if we could also have a couple copies available for the public, that would be great. I can do that as well. Thank you, you so just much, want. I appreciate it. All right, we'll table item 10 for now. We will move to item 11 and that is Public Works and Development Services Department Management Modifications, and that will be presented by Dana Langley, our city manager. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So tonight we are proposing some management modifications to the Public Works and Development Services Department. Um, with my appointment to city manager, it leaves the Public Works Director position vacant and so what I'm proposing to do is to create a new classification of a director of public works and development services and Mr. Ben Moody who is currently our development services director would move into that uh, classification. With that I'm proposing to reclassify the development services director position to a deputy director of development services position which we would recruit for uh, immediately to get somebody in there to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the department and that person would report to the Director of Public Works and Development Services. And then um, because we have a Deputy Director in Development Services, we have two Deputy Directors in Public Works, uh, Engineering and Maintenance. We're proposing to reclassify the Utility Superintendent position to Deputy Public Works Director Utilities. There's no change in pay from what the current Utility Superintendent, Mr. Phil Marler, is making. You'll note in the staff report, there's a change to the salary schedule because the Deputy Public Works Director Utilities position actually um, in the salary schedule currently makes less than the Utility Superintendent. So to ensure that he does not make less because we're changing his title, we are changing the uh, salary schedule. And then with that, I'm asking Council to approve the corresponding changes to the salary schedule. Um, with this, you know, this is for the foreseeable future. Um, Mr. Moody's going to be very busy, but he will have these deputy directors that assist with the day-to-day -day operations. And then, um, of course, I will be available to assist um, Ben as much as, as he needs me with public works. And so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the council? Seeing none, any questions from the public? <laughs> Any questions online? No public comment. All right. Then with that, I'll bring it back to the council for action. Through the mayor. Yes, ma'am. I move to adopt the resolution authorizing A, B, C, D as recommended in the report. All right. I have a motion for um, adopting resolution for 11A through D. Second. I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Eyes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. Congratulations to Mr. Moody. <laughs> or, con or condolences. <laughs> uh, actually, um, in the interest of time, we will go ahead and go on to the next item, uh, knowing we have to come back to uh, agenda item 10. Future agenda items. This is the opportunity to discuss with the city manager about items that came up in the meeting this evening that you would like to have brought back to council at a later date. Are there any comments relating to the agenda items um, that may have come in during the meeting tonight and she's that way? Okay. Um, do we have any comments that came in about future agenda items? Okay. Um, then we will go ahead and ask the counselor, is there any future agenda items? None for me, sir. All right. Hearing none, we will then go back in the agenda to agenda item 10. Make sure I had the right number. Morrison, you have the floor, literally. <laughs> Thank you.
Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I'm bringing for you our next phase of staffing needs for the finance division, this time focused on accounting. And uh, you have uh, updated resolutions in front of you. After Local One communicated they have questions or concerns about the Account One position, I removed that uh, position from the resolution to bring it back at another time. So as you know, the back office performs the bookkeeping, accounting, um, and accounting, which includes treasury budgets, audits, debt service, uh, administration, compliance reporting, and financial analyses for departments, the CM, and this council. Um, we are um, really uh, in a position of being understaffed at the moment, and we're working hard to uh, work on our plan for recruitment and retention and our succession plan. Um, we need a new succession plan. Um, uh, when I took this position a couple of years ago, the succession plan was working well, but things happen. And so uh, we find ourselves uh, short um, on the, the accounting positions and um, with uh, you know not as much experience. So with the two most senior, I, I always try to find more creative ways to, uh, to put this, uh, to color this, this image, but uh, we have, we have uh, a staff of, um, we'll say four, uh, in our in our accounting department at a professional level, and um, with the two most senior people, we have combined 36 years of experience uh, with the city doing this work. With the, the the next two down the down the line, they have a combined experience of six years of experience. Um, next three, I should say, six years of experience. So it's quite a uh, quite a big gap there. We are experiencing recruiting and retention issues for the first time. Um, that I can recall at this level, and we have to work on that. Uh, we are trying to modernize to uh, appeal to our internal and external customers, uh, but also to our staff. And by modernize, I mean we're trying to work on our systems and come up with a more modern workplace. Uh, we don't seem to be pulling uh, applicants away from their private sector jobs. At one time, Yuba City, um, even in the, uh, the uh, accounting and uh, uh, fine, you know, the finance department, we used to see a lot of applicants come from all over the place, uh, neighboring counties. Um, we would have quite large pools, and uh, we don't we don't seem to be doing that. And we're and in fact we're losing staff members to agencies where we would have never lost a, uh, staff members to uh, in in recent years or in history. Uh, the city uh, did perform a comp study on these positions, compensation study on these positions, and found that the accounting manager was profoundly below. Uh, market and um, and it recommends adjustments to the accountants as well. We have a pending retirement. It's hard for me to say because uh, um, this person's been um, critical, uh, uh, had a critical role in our department for a long time, and I'm in the position where I need to overstaff that that role of accounting manager uh, for as long as possible for uh, for training and to help bring that person up as quickly as possible. Some of this is the some of this um, this information is some of what the, came from the compensation study. Um, you can see the the current uh, salary, the monthly uh, salary for for each position. You can see uh, a delta of uh, twenty eight point seven to twelve point one. The delta on the accounting manager was actually higher than that. It was um, I've, I've seen it in a couple of reports now over the years of being well over 30% out from, from median. Um, I settled on uh, 28.7, about 5% lower, 5% below median. Um, because I, I, I think that the comparisons that uh, were used um, were difficult ones. And um, you know, as we, as we looked at it and we evaluated, uh, my, my team and I, um, we felt more comfortable with this 28.7 uh, number. If, if further analysis occurs, uh, we might have an update to that number. But for, for now, uh, given the analysis that we have, uh, we thought this was a fair number. And the accounting, uh, the accountant too, uh, showed to be about 12%, 12% out. I, I did include on this slide what the um, impact to the, the the current budget would be, and part of the impact, it's not really the salary increases, it's because I'll, be having, I'll have two accounting managers for a period of time, and that's, that's the biggest part of this impact. 
um, for uh, we're we're guessing by the time we get a, after tonight, get a recru recruitment going, and uh, with the, the limitations of how fast we can recruit, um, we expect to have that person uh, uh, be overstaffed in that role for no more than four months is our expectation. And we will uh, that fifty eight thousand does consider that we've had significant um, salary savings for for several months as well. So my, the recommendation is to adopt the updated resolution, uh, which is really the same as the old resolution, just but with the accountant one position removed, um, which does, act, by the way, does not uh, change the uh, supplemental appropriation amount uh, because uh, uh, that, that uh, increase would be covered by salary savings uh, handily. So one, add the accounting manager until June 2022. Two, increase salaries for the accountants. And three, authorize a supplemental appropriation. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions from the council? None. Any questions from the public? Okay. How about online? No public comment. All right. Um, I'll make one comment before I bring it back to the council uh, for action, and that's Mr. Morrison. Um, Thank you for bringing this forward because I know that through the uh, budget ad hoc committee, uh, a lot of us talked about this uh, at least a year ago as far as budgeting and hiring for what we need in the future, not just because we have a position allocated. And I appreciate you looking forward to the transition that's pending coming up with retirement. So I uh, just want to say thank you. With that, I'll bring it back to the Council for Action. Through the mayor. Yes, ma'am. I move to adopt the resolution approving the following changes to the finance department, authorizing positions in the fiscal year 2022 operating budget and amend the salary schedules as follows. A, uh, A, B, amending B with uh, deleting account one and C. Second. Uh-oh. Yes, sir. No, no, if I may clarify, so you're, you're moving to adopt the updated resolution that was provided to you by Spencer. Correct. Thank you. And the second as well? Correct. Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, All right. We will move to the uh, reports and communications. Um, the following reports and communication items were provided for the council's information. No action can be taken on items under this section unless the council agrees to include it on a subsequent agenda. We'll go to Ms. Langley as our city manager for her report. So a quick report. I just want to note that, um, you know, COVID has impacted the city similar to, you know, everybody else. And I just want to acknowledge the efforts of so many people within the city to um, step and a step up to you know cover for areas that we don't have coverage, take on new roles because we need to fill them. And then just from the administrative side, you know you have departments that have come together with human resources to work collaboratively to uh, address the administration of you know having employees out for for um, whether it's workers comp or you know for illness and just I'm very appreciative of staff and the fact that they do it seamlessly so that the public doesn't see a reduction in services. So just huge acknowledgement to our staff. Righty, thank you. Uh, we'll come back to the council, council member Harris. Oh, you've got one order here, one oh, no order worries. there. I don't mind, I don't <laughs> mind doing that. Um, my, uh, we see we had, uh, Interrupting my mojo here. Um, Yuba Sutter Arts and then, of course, um, Sabuvka meeting recently. I, I would like to add that I've received at least one text um, from a member of the public who is watching today in full support of the way we handled the uh, districting process. Um, Yuba Sutter Arts, business as usual. Um, however, I would do encourage everybody to go to yubasutterarts.org and I believe it's .org, and look at all the, the plethora of events and different things we have, they have going on over there to uh, 
enrich the community and whatnot, uh, from poetry to plays to um, films to um, art displays and, and artists and, in residence and at the gallery in both Yuba City and in Marysville. So keep that up. So Bufka, we had uh, we elected a. Uh, a uh, new swore in the new chair and vice chair for 2022. Um, we also had a public hearing on unmet transit needs where we discussion regarding that. Uh, there did not happen to be anything mentioned from Yuba Sutter community members, however. Um, SACOG continues to assist local jurisdictions in meeting the state requirements for their housing elements, those uh, local jurisdictions who request assistance with that. We had a workshop uh, featuring our, our speaker was Mr. Rick Cole, who's a former mayor of Pasadena and the city of Azusa, among many other roles in public service. Um, he, he stressed the importance of uh, land use when, when city government in, is in that, establishing that as your blueprint for moving forward and for your future. And not only that, for, for uh, encourage cities to decide up front what it is exactly that we want um, for different areas of the city or in different vacant properties or different development opportunities um, in the area. And then once we decide that, then make it easy on the developers who want to provide that. Rather than doing, it, doing piecemeal, it's like, okay, here we are, uh, we're available, here we are in the city, and then when they come, uh, kind of do one-offs and, and, and torture them with, with nitpicks. I'm not saying that that's what we do, but that was his recommendation to avoid doing that because we want to make we do want to truly be open and available and um, a a community of choice for people to invest in our community. Um, and that is it. And he also you know encouraged th things that we already do. I, in my opinion, is that when we do have community meetings and community hearings and seek community input when appropriate, that we are engaged. He 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 brought up a couple of examples. Um, um, where the public would come, say it was in a community hall or whatnot, but city staff was congregated in the corner doing their thing over coffee while the community comes in versus the mayor, the council, city staff greeting everybody, feeling, letting them feel welcome to come in. We really do truly want to hear your input. And so changing that paradigm as far as um, the creating a proper atmosphere that would encourage community input because that is, after all, the, the intent of the meeting in the first place. Um, along with uh, proper plans um, and discussed uh, as far as land use goes. So that was the gist of his message, which was very informative. So, and that is it. In Thank the you, last sir. Two weeks, anyway. All right. I'm going rogue myself. Councilmember Espindola. I was like, that's not the list. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I, got. I know, huh? Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. And now it's changed up there. Now it's so we're, changed just, we're going we're, rogue we're tonight. We're just kind of putting each other, yeah. Um, ca uh, Council Member Harris, that was really interesting. We were talking about land use and, and the shift of um, how, how to engage community public. I really like that. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, <clears throat> so on the committee assignments through the city, Feather River Air Quality, I have a meeting this month, um, and that'll be fun. Uh, uh, my first meeting to the county-wide RDA Oversight Board, I was just, I was wanting to really prepare for that meeting because, you know, I want to make sure I'm up to speed. I don't like to show up to these meetings and not be um, prepared and hopefully, um, you know, things um, don't go well for our city because I am very conscientious of that. And then when I looked at the last meeting that they, or the last minutes of meetings was, January of 2021, so I'm like, oh, this meeting, this board meets often. So they've had one one meeting, and um, it was approval of the calendar and the members, and um, and the meeting was led by Supervisor Dan Flores, which um, that was fun because, um, you know, he's always a good time <laughs> in the discussions. And the main F, the main reason for this committee, I've come to learn, is really helping us as a city to um, continue uh, working through the redevelopment agency and um, moving away from that. So we had to adopt the resolution of the ROPS. Did I say that correctly? I look at our finance director, make sure, uh, for spending plan for 2023. One area that was really kind of interested, and I think the council finds this part interesting as well, because we've had discussions about this in the past. 
So there's a long range property management liquidation going on. There's gonna be a list of some of our properties. A gentleman that um, I think that you might be interested in looking at that list, so maybe we can distribute it out on a one way message from our city manager to the rest of you so you can see that list. Um, then um, uh, Sutter Animal Shelter Authority, can't, that meeting got canceled. Uh, Regional Water Authority, a lot of activity. Um, I went to uh, the first uh, executive governing board meeting. Um, again, you know, minutes, calendars, um, standing ad hoc committees, who participates in what. Uh, the two that I continue to be are in the federal affairs and local advocacy. One area that we really, um, which I found impressive with uh, RWA is that they, they have a strategic plan review. So this plan is a three-year plan. And um, there are, uh, it's graded by color in the sense of the progress of activities. And so um, I find that to be very effective because then the executive board is able to uh, give input to the executive director and the team to agree or not agree on the progress of the work. Um, other discussion like we have here, uh, staffing, uh, retention, um, and good staffing is hard to find. So we discussed about the executive team and uh, position reclassifications to retain um, good staff and bring them up to par as we just did with um, our own staff here in the city. On the Regional Water Authority Federal Affairs, um, one topic that was a, a big topic that I find a theme across the committees and us here is the regional coordination. How do we do regional coordination? How do we also understand what you have going compared to what we have going? Are we competing? Are we non-competing? Are we supporting? Are we, are we not? So that was a big discussion um, in the affairs because of all these federal funds that are coming in, federal funds, state funds, and we don't want to jeopardize um, those uh, regional collaborative partners that we have in receiving some of these funds. So there was a fact sheet that was distributed at our workshop on um, the Build a Better American fact sheet on infrastructure, which has a lot of information. We also talked about the WIN Act funding for Water Bank in the region, big topic of discussion in more of the Sacramento region area. Two other things in the city that we've all experienced, which was the funding workshop that Spencer and his team did, amazing workshop, really good information. PowerPoint was better the second time, thank you. <laughs> um, and then we did a team's workshop and that was fantastic working with all of our executive uh, team members and our council. Uh, uh, adding to Aqua, one other committee is that I've been also uh, appointed by um, President Tobin and Vice President Kathy Green on the Agriculture Committee, which is gonna be fun because there's a lot of uh, local representation, um, but there hasn't been from the city. So that, that'll be a, um, an addition to, to the other committees that I'm working on. And as Diana, our city manager said, I genuinely just, I know that th they're not in the room here with us virtually. I know people will catch up sometimes and watch these things when they're trying to fall asleep late, <laughs> you know, in another moment. But um, I, I just sincerely wanna say thank you to each of you as the executive team. But I also understand the city staff and each of our departments, you know, we are just better because of your dedication, your service and your work. There's no, there's no end to that. Um, I, I just want you to know that I sincerely appreciate all that, even though I am not physically being able to bounce around from different departments and say hi and share that appreciation for, um, for all of you. Um, I do want to kind of highlight one department a little bit tonight. Um, I just um, haven't had as much of this um, highlighting and that's the gentleman in our corner back there. Um, I just want to say a special thank you to Chief Brian Baker. Um, I have, um, I'm impressed with how you're moving forward in your new position. Um, I have seen how the Yuba City Police, seen from our dispatching to detective work and anyone in between, uh, I've seen firsthand how the community policing is working, how you're making those adjustments and you're um, leadership is moving in that direction, your responsiveness and your strength and your loyalty to protecting our community. I see that from you as a leader and I'm seeing that 
from the uh, department and the staffing. So I just wanna say thank you so much for, for all of those things that you've done um, in the recent weeks and before, but recently I've seen more of that and I, I just wanted to say thank you to you. Thank you. Okay, that's all. Ready. Thank you. Councilmember Boomgarden. All right. <clears throat> Uh, my one committee that I had an opportunity to participate in was the Sutter County Children's and Families Commission. This was my first meeting, uh, which is led by Michelle Blake, who's one of our planning commissioners. And uh, they, they were running through a study and research. And the amount of outreach that this organization is doing is really phenomenal. I was, I was really blown away. This was followed up with a meeting with uh, the city manager, myself, with uh, Michelle in regards to you know how can we continue to, to partner and, and use the synergies of the city with the Sutter County Children's and Families Commission. So you'll, you'll see some stuff coming up in regards to outreach. And, and this is really um, age zero to age five is really what their focus is on. And, and uh, you know that's a critical age, especially right now with uh, what's going on with COVID. But um, I was, uh, thank you, Mayor, for appointing me to that committee. I didn't I, uh, I knew what their mission was, but boy, I tell you what, I'm super impressed with how they're doing their business, and kudos to Michelle and her staff. I uh, did a, uh, attend the uh, funding workshop, and I want to thank city staff for the funding workshop. Uh, I would highlight a few things um, coming out of that, and I think the message uh, from our city manager was, hey, look, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you're interested in requesting funds from the city, we're... We're in the process now of getting uh, getting going with our budgeting process, and uh, now's the time to kind of put your packages together uh, and and submit them. And you don't want to, to uh, miss the opportunity. And I would piggyback with that. Uh, I know uh, we received a an email from uh, Mr. Moody in regards to CDBG. That process is going to be rolling out as well. They did an outstanding job last year of outreach to the community. I'm sure that they'll be doing the same again. But this is opportunities, uh, not only for the public, but for us to um, provide uh, resources to our community. Did attend the team building uh, effort with the city council uh, and, and discuss some futuring for the city. Thought it was very valuable. I know we have another meeting coming up. Um, uh, continually, continually impressed with uh, not only the executive team, but our team engaged with you know trying to continue to move the, the city forward. It's challenging times, but you know what? We continue to keep the doors open. Uh, we uh, I acknowledge definitely acknowledge the uh, the efforts uh, of our city staff. You know, there's a lot of staffing issues going on in all the departments regards to COVID, and just keeping the services um, being delivered is a is a big deal. So kudos to the staff, kudos to the leadership, kudos to the folks that are delivering the services. I uh, have a regional housing authority meeting tomorrow. Looking forward to that. I have uh, first league of cities uh, policy committee on transportation, public works, and uh, communications. Looking forward to accessing more information about how we may tap into to fundings for that. And finally, um, looking forward. I know we haven't necessarily established a date for this, but in given everything that I've been hearing in the community uh, in regards to homeless. Um, is getting that homeless workshop uh, on board when we can um, to, to continue outreach to the community, but also develop whatever strategies and plans that we can continue to, to foster as a city. And with that, um, thank you. Thank you, sir. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I, I, uh, I had an introduce, uh, introduction to um, the leadership team at Sabufka. Uh, they had lots of questions, so I had lots of questions, and uh, I look forward to uh, that relationship in the next um, year. Um, there's a lot of exciting opportunities there. Um, I attended the funding work workshop as well. I'd like to thank staff for, for their efforts in getting us up to speed on what's going on with the, the funding uh, available to us. Um, the mayor and I attended an uh, intergovernmental committee meeting, and I'll tell you, going to... to um, Councilperson um, Boomgarner's point, the bulk of the meeting was about the homeless. And, and, and so there was a lot of uh, great ideas that were, being, uh, that were um, discussed between the city and the county. Um, a lot of stuff that I hadn't even thought of. And so I'm, I'm excited the, the, the direction the city and the county are going with that. Um, in closing, I, I, I don't want to beat a, a dead horse, but something that was brought up earlier with the districting 
and I probably should have mentioned this earlier when we were discussing that, was uh, in the last meeting, we, there, we did have a, 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 um, a card where there was a uh, concern about the boundaries between three and four. And if you remember back to the green map and the purple map, both those maps are very similar except for that border. And so the, uh, the, the, the individuals that were concerned about that were concerned uh, because uh, in their estimation, it, it broke up neighborhoods, which is not the intent of these laws. And so that council meeting, we had our, our city attorney and we had a demographer here. And uh, the demo demo demographer addressed that issue by saying District four is pretty heavy anyways. And, and, and that's why you've got that strange looking line down the middle. So, and that's probably uh, a, a layman's term of explaining it. He explained it a lot better than I did. But the point is those lines are there and they're there for a reason because they make sense. And they're there to protect us and the people that we represent. Thank you. Thank you. Since our last meeting, a lot has been going on. Uh, with uh, with my role in serving the city. Uh, we'll start with the Transit Authority. Uh, as I reported earlier, the new Vice Chair of Yuba Center Transit is our Vice Mayor. Uh, he served the previous year as an alternate and filled in a few meetings, so he was able to make that transition. And with RWMA and Transit, there was a request that we put out last year because there's so many big projects going on to keep as much consistency with those boards as possible. Um, and uh, so I was glad that he was able to step in and, and, uh, and do that. Um, the best news that we had under transit, uh, and I think we all got the, the emails on it, was the um, Regional Housing Authority's project at Richland is getting approved. And the good news for transit is that was $8 million built into that to go to the transit authority in building their new $40 million facility. So that was the huge first drop in the bucket there. Um, there are many other grant applications that are out right now and in the process of being submitted for transit. Um, they are, um, it's kind of like voting. It's you're frequent and often, you know as a Chicago style, as I call it. So they're applying for all the grants and um, we should be hearing word on a few more grants here in the next uh, month or so. Um, the other thing with transit is uh, it, it hasn't recovered since COVID hit, ridership is still down, uh, but they are still providing a service and uh, ridership kind of hit its plateau and, and it's, it is just maintaining steady. Uh, RWMA, uh, the biggest thing that's going on there is, uh, of course, changing of the chairs, but then we have actually started the active recruitment for the new executive to serve uh, the RWMA. Uh, for those of you that may not know, in the past, uh, the executive for transit and his team and the executive for RWMA and that team are one and the same. They just share resources and do that. But with the amended JPA and everything that's going on, they started the recruitment for a their own executive to be over RWMA. Um, the Intergovernmental, to, Intergovernmental Relations Committee that we serve on. IRC, I got to call it that. I like that. Um, the IRC. So um, uh, the IRC's first meeting was really good. Um, it occurred uh, with great timing because they had just changed over their chair and vice chair on Tuesday, and we met on Thursday. Um, the biggest accomplishments there uh, right out of the shoot was finding out what all was going on being discussed that we as a council had no clue that had been going on um, over the past 10, 11 months. Um, wasn't as many things as we thought. But one of the big ones was the, the homeless issue. Um, we have heard often from the county that they want us to give money to this and give money to that, but we were not seeing any data. Uh, I think we had a very productive meeting with them, helping um, their CAO and their chair, uh, uh, Chairman Ziegemeyer, understand that this council is data-driven. And it's one thing to ask for money, but it's another thing to give us the data and show us where it's going. 
what it's needed for. So in the coming weeks, um, actually requested and, and uh, their CAO said we should have it in a few weeks, uh, some different budgets, some different um, expense reports of what different homeless services are projected to cost or are costing. So we can take a look at those uh, as a council when it comes to things like, um, you know, our uh, some of the CARES Act funding or the ARPA funding or CDBG or whatever funding we're going to have to contribute towards that, even out of our general fund. Um, but uh, we have requested that on behalf of the council so we can have a really in-depth conversation to figure out what and where we can contribute. Um, did inform them that we are looking at having a homeless workshop in the future um, and how that would structure up and how we envision that is we will have one with us as the city because the one thing that really we haven't done is figure out what our role is just us as the city. And we're not here to look at stats and numbers because we get those from the, the annual counts and stuff, but really, how do we fit into this issue that, that we need to solve this problem? And what is our role in that? Uh, encourage them to actually do the same themselves because the next stop would be to pull us together if, uh, if they would entertain that. And then the third stop would be after both municipalities have done their own, come together, then get together with uh, all the outside agencies that we all partner with because we can't quite figure out amongst ourselves what to do, much less help them until we know really what we're doing. So it's kind of a structured approach and that's what we uh, uh, proposed. Um, so stay tuned, hopefully more and more information will be coming forward from that. And it was really about working together. There was a lot of discussion and uh, uh, thank you to the former Mayor Boomgarden who warned me my phone would go kaboom when things hit. Uh, a little project called the Horseshoe, as I heard about. Um, it's amazing what happens. The county went and talked to different people about what they were proposing and our phone started blowing up. I know mine did, thinking that the city was doing something. Uh, so we've expressed the interest that we really want to work collaboratively with them, understand what they're doing when they're doing something that's adjacent to the city to really help us understand and, and be able to field those calls and stuff because the misconception from people were we were expanding our sphere of influence and it's like, nope. Not us. So, um, you know, that's the relationship that we want to have is, you know, really collaborative and transparent between the two organizations so that we can work. And we've discussed this. The key relationships um, are going to be between the city manager and the CAO and the mayor and the chair. And uh, so with those, we're hoping to really nurture those this year and basically launch us into your year next year as the, uh, as the incoming mayor next year. So... Um, we did have the, um, the workshops and, uh, thank you, Spencer and your team for everything you did there. Wish we'd had greater attendance, uh, to add to, uh, council member boom gardens, um, uh, thoughts as far as people that come before the city. Um, uh, it's also good to know that a lot of that money that we talked about has strings attached to it. We can only spend it on certain things. And that is something very, very important to, to realize as well. Um, but there are a lot of programs. So as people come forward, uh, the CDBG, I'd written that down and you brought that one up. Uh, that's a program uh, that Mr. Moody's team is, is getting ready. And I think it should be going out in the next few weeks and kind of ramping up. Am I correct, Mr. Moody? Yeah, okay. Make sure I had the right email in my brain when I was thinking. Um, you know, that's a great opportunity and that's one source of funding. So if you qualify for those, make sure you attend those meetings, understand it and apply. Um, the um, team building workshop, uh, amazing. Thank you, uh, Ms. Langley and the entire E-team and this council because it uh, is the rare opportunity that we get in a room and able to have a candid discussion and really, you know, come together as a team. And uh, we're a team of a little over 300 people. So I, I like our odds in the NFL, especially if you're going against the 49ers. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but with that, you know, the better that we learn how to work together and understand each other, 
the more this city is going to thrive. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that was in that room for being open, candid, and looking, as we always do, for what's the best interest of this city. Because at the, at the heart of it, I can sum it up, that whole meeting of that, you had a room full of people that care about this city and want the very best for it. Um, and that's evident in the one really fun thing that I got to do and to the, to the former mayor at the end of the dais there, uh, they say plagiarism is uh, the best form of flattery. So I stole a play out of your book from a few years ago because it was a great idea. And we did a mayor city bus tour. And uh, we're going to be adding more of those. But in contrast, we can go back to 10 years ago to where we were, uh, the recession had happened. We had no starts in housing hardly. We had gone from a high of eight, 900 permits a year down to, we were lucky if we got about 30. And to be able to take the leaders of the community around throughout the city, and we hit roughly 28 different stops and show them the work that, it's, it's not the council, it's not just E-team, it's all 300 plus members of us that came together and did our part that has this city heading in a great direction. We've got over 600 homes right now that aren't just, you know, what ifs. We're not talking the Boke Stewart area. We're talking, we drove to sites to where they're moving the ground. The houses are being built. That was amazing. We talked about the potential hotels coming in. We talked about the retail businesses coming in. Uh, and to that, I want to thank all 300 plus, not just the five of us here and our E-team, but all 300 plus members for all of their work, because that is what's going to enable this city to thrive in the future. You know, people are expecting services. They're wanting businesses in town. And this, this is the proof that it's coming. So I want to express my thanks. And I really want to express my thanks uh, to the small team that put it together, Ms. Langley, Mr. Moody, your team, our driver, everybody that was there. It was a collaborative effort, and it was amazing. And we're going to do it again. We will be promoting it uh, about the end of, uh, the next one should be somewhere around the end of March, 1st of April. But I asked my colleagues to join me because we want to change this up a little bit. The first one was out of your playbook. Didn't know what we were getting into, but it was fun. So, yeah. So what we'd like to do on the next one, if I can have uh, all of our council involved, as we go to different areas of the city, it would be nice if we would have the different members of a council. And we might even tie it back to the districts. You and I spoke about this, and you even brought that up. Um, even though we're at large, so let's not confuse that. But... Different stops along the way The suddenly we pull up and, and Grace, you're there to, to meet us. On the gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> lemonade is free. Cups are five bucks. I get it. So, but these are the things that would be nice to do and uh, just to really show people how we really work well together. So look for more information on that. Um, and I will just close by what's already been said. Our team at the city is amazing. You guys are persevering through tough times with how you've been impacted with COVID. And you don't give 100% if it's possible. You guys give 200%. We've seen it, and I know that every one of us on this dais is greatly appreciative of it. So with that, if there's nothing else coming before us, I will adjourn this meeting. <laughs>